Hey, what's up everyone? Hippo TC here and welcome back to another Sea of Thieves guide video. In this video, we are going to cover everything you need to know for the Monkey Island Tall Tale Three. If you want to see the others, or maybe you don't haven't gotten the other ones done yet, I have guides for each of the other Tall Tales, Tall Tale One and Tall Tale Two. So make sure to check those out. Now that being said, at the time of recording for this Tall Tale, there is currently a bug in it that even if you do all the combinations, it won't like unlock everything even if you complete everything. So that's a bug. I'm sure that will get fixed here very shortly. But again, at the time of this recording, it's not there, but I will show you how to do everything. I'm gonna show you where all the memoir locations are. I'm gonna show you where all of the notes are and the journals and just everything you need to know and how to do absolutely everything. And I'm gonna to try to do it in a way that kind of goes through it in the most logical fashion for you as you are attempting this tall tale. This tall tale is pretty fun, so make sure to enjoy yourself while you're doing it, and I will do my best to just tell you of all the things that you need to do in the order that you need to do them. I also have little sections in the chapters here that you can kind of scroll through that just show you where all the notes are, just shows you where all the memoirs are, and just shows you where all the journals are. So if you just want to skip ahead and don't want any spoilers, you just want to make sure that you get where you get to know where all those things are, make sure to skip ahead. Now, all of that being said, Let's jump into it. This tall tale is going to start like all of the other tall tales. You're going to head to capsize charters at any of the outposts and vote on the third book. There's going to be some dialogue with Kate. The pirate lord will show up and eventually the portal will open and you'll set sail and head to Monkey Island. Spooky lady wearing an unnecessarily large hat comes bursting out of the water and says she has a book for me. After heading through the portal, you're going to see Guy Brush show up in the Black Pearl. I do kind of wish secretly it was Jack Sparrow, but we'll keep that to another time. You'll have Guy Brush show up. He's going to kind of guide you to Monkey Island. You're going to follow the Black Pearl through the portal, and you'll get to Monkey Island. Black Pearl, so we don't get separated. Once through the portal, you are going to arrive at Monkey Island. Now, this is a very big island. It's almost, I would say, bigger than Shores of Gold. So there is a lot that you got to do here. A lot of combinations that are all in this beginning chunk, and it does get confusing. So I'm going to try to walk through probably the most logical way to do all of the things that you need to do on this island. Like all of my other guide videos, I'm going to kind of let the video play so you can see everywhere I go with as few cuts as possible. So that being said, what you're going to do instead of parking by the Black Pearl, you're actually going to go to the left side of the island here and park over here. Now, you can kind of see the location of where I'm parking, and this is on purpose because at one point you are going to need to launch a rock at your ship with a catapult. This will be a recommendation later. So I try to park my ship kind of close to where you need to be on the left side of Monkey Island, uh, and you'll see later in the guide video. I didn't get it quite right, and I'm going to show you how to get it perfect. But for now, I parked my boat here. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go meet up with Guy Brush. Now, he does tell us where we need to go, and I'm going to show you exactly where that is. But we need to meet at the monkey head as located here on the map.
Arriving at Guybrush, hey, this will be our it. starting location no, for ship. this tall like tale. He's going yeah, to give us a map, be, explain to us what we need to find, and how to get it. Under this giant stone monkey head. Ah, I was sure I left the key right here. It looks kind of like a big cotton swab, but I can't find it anywhere. In fact, I'm pretty sure someone's been poking around since the last time I was here. They left this map behind, see? Looks like they were searching for three golden idols. My pirate instincts tell me they're probably part of some elaborate yet thematically appropriate puzzle. You hold on to the map and go look for the key. I'll wait here and keep watch for LeChuck and Elaine. From Guybrush, our very first memoir location is actually right behind him, and it is right here on the rock. So make sure to sit down here, and this will be our memoir location number one. One of the most. Now, after we get that location, we are going to head down to the beach, and we are actually going to find our first note as well. It'll be right up here on the left on the rock. After reading that note, we are going to head to the shipwreck. And there's also another note right in front of the shipwreck. So we're going to grab that too. That will be note number two. After grabbing that note, we are actually going to head into the shipwreck before we go any further. That's because we do need something from a cereal box that can be found in the captain's quarters. After searching some cereal boxes, eventually you're going to find the toy monocle. You want to pick this up and take this with you because we will need this to continue the tall tale. Now we're going to leave the shipwreck and now we're going to head over to the Black Pearl. But before we do, there is another memoir location. This will be the second memoir location. It will be found right here on this tree and it's fairly easy to get to. You're just going to climb it up right here and have a seat. This pond has After getting this memoir, we're going to go pick up the monocle and don't worry about that hanging guy there. We will do something with that in a little bit. But first let's grab that monocle and we are going to head to the Black Pearl and talk to the crew. Now, there are two things we need to do here. First, the whole crew is here, so let's talk to the crew 
if you want some fun dialogue, kind of spend some time here with these guys, but I'm just going to show you where they are. You got him there, the cook over here. Hey, you. And then you got our favorite guy up here, Cobb, and you do need to talk to him for a accommodation. So make sure to talk to Cobb after talking to this scurvy dog who has, you know, quite a bit of fun dialogue. You are going to go over and talk to Captain Coco right there on the helm. He's by the big monkey head in the... Now you are going to rescue Captain Coco from his uh, certain doom, I guess. I don't know. And you are going to repair him with a toy monocle. Now pick up now Admiral Coco and let's head back over to the beach. Now what we got to do here is we kind of have to use that mirror and transfer the harsh light that is reflecting off the mirror using spy glasses across the beach for progression in the tall tale a little bit later so for now what we're going to do is we're going to put that stand back up and follow these little footprints from this monkey and the bananas uh the banana peels and we're going to go up here and grab a spy glass Once we've found the spyglass, we're going to go back to that stand and place the spyglass there. Looking through it, you can kind of see where you need to go next. We got to go over there. Now grab Captain, sorry, Admiral Coco and head on over. As you can see, the light is now being kind of reflected through the mirror, through the spyglass. And this will kind of be the theme for this part of the tall tale. Head over to the spike, remove the skull, and shove Admiral Coco in his new home. Now let's find the next spyglass. And we're going to pick this one up off the sand as well. And it will show you also where you need to go next. Now let's head that way. Now here is the banana tree. This is important for later. And before we continue with that part of the tall tale, we are actually going to stop here and get a little sidetracked. So first, there's another memoir location right here. This will be memoir location Delicious. number three. After sitting down, you're going to head into the jungle now. But before you do that, another note will be here on the left. So make sure to grab that. After getting the memoir location and the note, we just to show you kind of what where we need to go later on is this spyglass is going to show you the location of some spikes that we will need to get another item for later. Now, let's head into the jungle to the camp of the castaway. Heading in, we are going to pick up some notes found right here, and it'll explain what we need to do. Turning the page, we know that we need to find a key, and that key will be found in kind of a uh, stash as they were. So we're going to find, using those references there, we are going to go find a key to set up this trap, but we need to get the bait. Now, before we can get the bait, there's actually a memoir location right here on the left, so we're going to go grab that, and then we're going to continue on. Vines, creepers. 
now that we have that memoir location let's go find our key now from the castaway camp right here we are going to head over the ravine over this wooden bridge and we are going to look for the stashes now i'm going to show you where all four of the stashes are and i believe this is going to be rng so it's not going to be the same every single time but this is where it can get a little confusing so kind of pay attention a little bit but here is the first stash the key could be in there it wasn't in there for me now i'm just going to show you where all of them are and i'm going to let it play out Now, I did end up finding the key here, but I'm going to show you where the last uh, stash can be found and where the last where the key could be maybe for you. Now, after we find all four stashes, we are going to take this key into the ravine. The ravine is where we are going to get the bait to bait the trap to get the next key. <laughs> Lots of keys in this tall tale. From the castaway camp, you're going to head over here. There's actually a ladder that can be found over here on the right. Climb down the ladder and you will find the secret stash that will have some bait that we need to set the trap. Once we find it, we're going to open it up with our key, grab the bait, and also there is a note in here that you're going to want to make sure that you read for accommodation. Grab the bait here, and we are going to head back up to the camp. Arriving back at the camp, we're going to walk over to the trap and pour the bait into the jar here or to the bowl. And uh, Monkey's going to come out and, well, it's going to it's gonna make the poor castaway upset. Ah, don't tell me that flea-ridden critter got his paws on more of my supplies. That's the sixth time this week. Well, if it couldn't get worse for Herman, it's about to get a little bit worse because he's going to walk over to that trap and it's your job as a scurvy pirate to set the trap off and capture him. Ah, what's wrong with this useless thing? After capturing Herman, hey, we are now going to, well, idea? we're going to steal from him as all good pirates do. This isn't how you rescue someone. That was tomorrow's breakfast. Hey, that was tomorrow's lunch. You call this helping? Because I call it goofing around. You will do this three now, times and he will drop, drop a like key. You're going to grab that key and you're going to open up the you're chest that worse. is by the fire. 
Somebody get me down from here! Opening that up, you're going to grab some more notes, and these notes are going to tell you where oh, you can I find the ores for the rowboat. Really here to rescue me. You're just another thief who's here to steal my rowboat. Well, good luck using it without any oars. <laughs> now, this is actually pretty easy to find. You're worse than those good-for-nothing islanders. <laughs> that was rude, Herman. That was rude and uncalled for. Anyways... It's actually pretty easy to find. We are going to head out to it right now. So we're going to head back into the jungle over the bridge. And we're going to start to find these clues along the way. Once we find these barrels, we are going to be on the right path. So first, we're going to see the barrels. Then we're going to see the ladder. And the ladder, we're going to be looking for the pocket watch. Now, once we arrive at the pocket watch, there's actually some notes here from Herman that we're going to want to make sure that we grab. And they are right here on the ground. So go ahead and read those. Now, after reading the note, we are going to continue further in to the jungle. And we are going to see this flag here. And now we're going to see a little fishing spot with a boot. We're going to reach inside of the boot, and it's going to give us some more pages. And this will actually tell us where the ores can be found. Now, when I did this tall tale, we ran through it a few times, me and my friends. We discovered that there is a bit of RNG here. So I'm going to show you the two locations that we found them. So it won't be the same for you, or it might not be the same for you. But in our case, it's actually by the... Uh, by the by the fence so first we're gonna go to the flag then we have to follow the grog and this will lead us down to the cliff edge with some water and the first time we did this we found out that we needed to dig underneath the dagger and the dagger can be found over here on the log i'm going to show you where that is but for me in this playthrough it said to dig next to the fence so i'm going to show you where that is Once we get the oars, we're going to place them on the rowboat, and then we are going to use that rowboat to get a map from the guide that we saw earlier hanging upside, well, the skeleton that we saw hanging upside down. Anyways, put the oars over on the rowboat. It'll activate the rowboat, and you're just going to push that into the water. After pushing the rowboat into the water, we're going to get onto it and we are going to row up the river a little bit until we find that skeleton hanging upside down and we are going to grab the map from his hand. Park the rowboat underneath him, stand up, and grab the map. Now, there was also a bit of RNG we found out with this as well. So, I'm going to show you the two locations that we found where you had to go. Now, for this playthrough, it was the tree, but we also had one where we had to dig near a statue of a fist. So, I'm going to show you where both of those locations are. Now, from where you just were with the map, there's actually uh, some notes that are really close to you. So, you head this way. There are notes right by this tree. Now, after reading the notes, you're going to run back into the, the jungle here. And I'm going to show you if your uh, playthrough says you have to dig near the fist or the statue fist. I'm going to show you where that is. And then I'm going to head to the banana tree on the beach because that is actually where I have to dig.
arriving at the tree at the banana tree where i have to dig i pull out the shovel and dig and pull up our first golden skull head monkey idol thing now we do need to take three of these and place them on the altar that can be found in the jungle and i'm going to show you where that is now earlier or as you've been kind of running through the jungle you would have noticed kind of monkey statues pointing in a certain direction well the monkey statues are pointing you to the altar so we're going to head this way and then we are going to just follow the monkey statues Placing the idol on the altar will give us a checkpoint, which will be awesome. That way, if you do need to leave, at least you will have one of the idols done. Now, from here, we are going to head to the next idol and unlocking that. So from the idol and from the altar, we're going to head this way and we're actually going to go to the cliff. Now, there are multiple things that you got to do here, and this one was actually a little bit frustrating. And I'll get to uh, get into that a little bit more, but there are two accommodations that you have to get here, including some notes and uh, a few memoir locations. So let's get into it. Following the pathway here, you're going to see the area where you can climb up the rock cliff here. But before you climb up, there's actually a memoir location that can be found right over here on the rocks. The river splits here. It used to flow just one way, but I getting that memoir location, we are now going to head up this ladder or this rock climbing ladder thing, whatever it is. We're going to head up and we're going to get a note and another memoir location. We also have the catapult. Getting to the top now, we are going to read our note before we forget. And there is the catapult. So let's make, uh, let's read the note. And then we're going to sit down at a memoir location. The memoir location can be found right over here on the edge of the cliff. Now, there is also one more memoir location a little further up. But this is the one that I want to make sure that Either. you get. Now, we got to use this catapult to launch a rock at our ship. This is why we parked our ship where we did. So with the catapult aimed, you can kind of aim it when you stand next to it. With it aimed, we're going to head up a little bit further and we are going to get a rock. And hopefully, if I did it right, we are going to launch the rock over at the ship. But before we do that, there is a memoir location at the very top here. So let's sit down and grab that while we're up here. So we don't forget. I made Perfect. It. All right. Now we're going to turn around and we're going to grab a rock and we're going to place it down and launch it on the catapult. Now I did end up finding that I was almost perfect with my parking job and I missed by just ever so much. So I ended up having to go to the ship and kind of readjusting the ship a little bit forward and a little bit to uh, to the port side here. So I discovered that if I park it right about here and aim it at this rock, the bowsprit, it was perfect. So I'm gonna drop the anchor. I'm gonna show you kind of what this looks like, this spot. So yeah, I kind of aimed it right at the bowsprit there. And then I headed back up to the cliff and try to launch another catapult. Lucky for me, this did work the second time I tried it. And you'll get accommodation for that. 
Now, there is another one that we need to get, and we actually got to launch a rock at the banana tree on the beach. So I'm going to show you how to aim the catapult for that. And then after we get those two accommodations, then we're going to launch a rock at a monkey statue. So we are going to aim it a little to the left. So that's the statue that we are going to knock down. But you don't want to do that first, because if you do that before you get the banana accommodation, the uh at the current state of the tall tale it is actually bugged out so if you do the statue first you are not going to be able to get the other accommodations because the catapult will stop working so it's very important that you get the banana tree first and your ship before you hit the statue You're going to push that rock down and it will hopefully launch that bad boy over at the banana tree. You'll know you did right because you'll get the uh, combination unlocked. Perfect. So after you get the banana tree hit with a rock and your ship hit with a rock, now we just got to aim the catapult at the statue and we will be in business. So that looks pretty good there. We're going to go back up top, grab a rock, drop it down below and uh, we're gonna go collect our reward. All right, perfect. We are going to go get that uh, statue or the idol and place it on the altar now. So head over to the zip line. We're going to zip on down and grab the idol and place it on the altar. Placing the idol on the hand will give us another checkpoint. And now we are two done. We have one to go. After getting that idol placed, now let's go work on the final idol to grab. We're going to head back into the jungle and grab a stash of coconuts. Right here, you can see the stash kind of up in the tree, and we're just going to cut the rope, and it will drop it for us. Now, it didn't let me kind of grab it initially, but it did work in this playthrough. So just go up, grab the crate, and we are going to need to use this crate for a little bit later, and I'll get a little bit further into that. But for now, just grab the crate and head on over this way. As you can see, that is where the final idol is, and we got to do a little bit of work to get it down onto the ground. So we are going to walk over here and drop the crate here for something that we'll need a little bit later. 
as you can see we if we try to remove these skulls from the spikes it's not going to work it's going to say that we need a little something extra to get it off a potion a a something with the bananas that we have to make so let's go make that we're going to turn left head up here and i'm going to show you how to do all the things that you need to do Now heading up this way, first thing that we are going to do is we are going to grab the suntan lotion that can be found uh, kind of in this drop area here. So we are going to see the suntan spot location and we are going to drop on down and get the suntan lotion. We will need this for the brewing that we are going to do in a little bit. So grab it and head back through the underwater cave and climb all the way back up until you get to the very top uh, to the camp. Arriving at the camp, we are going to drop the suntan lotion or the oil there, and we are going to try to head into the camp. But if you go to the camp door, it's actually going to say that it's locked and you're going to need to find a key. Lucky for us, there is a map on the door that will show you the location of where the key is. So it's actually going to be right behind you in the water under some rocks. So head over here into the water and start looking. After moving the rocks, you will find the stockade key and this will open the door. So take the key back up to the door and open it up. Once you open the door, head on in, but don't forget your suntan lotion or your oil that you'll need to use in the brewing here in a second. But head on in, and before you do anything else, make sure to read this note right here on the table. Now head to the book, go down to the banana grease recipe. This will pin it into your book, and we'll find out everything that we need. Going into your journal, We'll find out that we need three burnt bananas, two coconut shells, and uh, some oil. So that will be the recipe. You can pull this pulley up and head over to the cannon. As you can see from the spyglass, it's going to kind of be on the 
the idol that we need to shoot down and the goal is to try to use the cannon to shoot down the idol but as you can see there it is uh it is rusted so we need to grease it up so going into the journal you can see the recipe right here so two coconut shells three black and bananas and that uh, suntan lotion so head over to the food barrel and do one of our favorite pirate traditions and that is to burn some bananas Now, after you burn three bananas, take those three burnt bananas, go inside and put them into the stew. Now that we've added the three bananas, we are going to take that suntan lotion or that suntan oil, and we're going to put that in there as well. And then the last two things that we need is the coconut shells. So kind of start looking around. That we'll use to put the banana grease in, that empty jar there. But we're going to look around for a coconut shell. And I think this might be random. I'm not sure if it's the same every time, but you'll see where I found the coconut shell. So here is one in the crate. And that was the only one I found in the, the stockade here or in the camp here. So I actually ended up going to the outside here on the cliff and found another one. After placing the last coconut shell into the, the pot here, you are going to be able to get the banana grease in the jar. So we're going to take the banana grease over to the cannon. We are going to grease that bad boy up, push the cannon to the edge here, and we are going to grab some cannonballs and use cannonballs to shoot the idol down. Perfect. Now, before you go down the zip line, grab that grease because you will need that down at the spikes that we were at a little bit earlier and head on down. Now, at the bottom of the zip line, there's actually going to be another note for you to find. So make sure to read that. And this should be number nine, I believe. Yes, number nine. We'll have one more note to read. Now, unfortunately for me, when I was doing this, I took a little bit too long to record and that uh that crate with the coconut shells went back to where we originally found it so i ended up having to go grab that again but while i was running through i just took the grease and put it on the spikes so from going down the zip line we're going to head over here head back up to the spikes and we are going to grease up the spikes and take the skulls off perfect now we're going to head to the cage now the cages kind of got knocked down as as you can see this is the only one that's unlocked reading the uh oh there's a gunpowder gummy there reading the journal you'll find out the reason this poor smuck had the gunpowder gummy now we're going to use that to open up the lock here but we need to kind of get that light from the mirror 
to that. So we're going to use this guy's skull with the gold tooth to kind of reflect the light towards him. But we do need three coconut shells. So now let's head back in and grab the three coconut shells. Now, before I go any further, the last note that you should have is actually found right here where the crow's nest got knocked down. So this is the last note for you right here on the left. Now, after getting that note, we're going to head back into the jungle and grab those three coconuts and the uh, and the crate. Heading back to the spikes, we're going to take the three coconut shells and place those on the spikes first, and then we're going to place the gold skull or the skull with the golden tooth, because the reason we have to place these coconuts first is we actually need it to be a little bit higher so that the reflection will hit the cage. Now that we have the three on there, we're going to place the skull up on top. And with that little beam, we know that we did it correct. And it will ignite the gunpowder gummy. Perfect. Now we have the third and the final idol that we need. So taking this idol, we are going to head back to the altar. Once you place the third and the final idol onto the altar, it is going to open up and give us the key that we are going to take to Guybrush. Arriving back at Guybrush, he sees that we have the key. He will open the gate for us, and we are about to enter the catacombs of Monkey Island. Now, there is a memoir location on the other side of this gate, so I'm going to show you where that is. There. Eats taming a monkey. Okay, I think it's time. Take the key and do as nature intended. Now, before we stick this big key in the monkey's longer. ear, we are going to Sometimes turn to the right here and it. sit down at a memoir location. Now, this will be number eight for the memoir, so you should have all of the notes at this point and eight memoir locations as far as sitting. Now, once we did that, we're going to take this big key, uh, this cotton swab, and we're going to stick it in the monkey's ear, and we're going to jiggle it around a little bit until this scurvy dog opens its mouth. Let's get everyone together. You won't want to miss this. This thing's a little stinky after all these years, but it should still work. It'll lead us through the catacombs straight to LeChuck. Oh, I almost forgot. If LeChuck's crew spots me down here, we'll never make it to a lane. Time for my secret weapon. It's a shame I don't have any spares. 
If anyone asks, you're a lost tourist searching for the secret of Monkey Island. Here, you should take this. A uh, floating head would probably give the game away. So we're going to take this head from Guybrush and we are going to head down into the the lair of Lechuk. Going through the monkey's mouth, there's actually a memoir at the very bottom of uh, of the entrance here. So I'm going to show you where that is. And the five journals that we have to find in the catacombs are actually really easy to find. You will find them along the pathway uh, that this zombie head will take you on. So I'm just going to let that play in its entirety. But before we go to the journals, the memoir location is right here at the very bottom of the entrance. Certain what I'd find below Once me. you get that, that should be memoir location number nine. And now we are going to follow the head through the catacombs. It does get a little bit confusing, but you will figure it out. These As you can see, I get turned around a little bit myself, organism. even though I've run through it a few no, times that already, and that is okay. Worse. The head will show me where I gotta go, and you along the way, you will find all the five journals. So I'm just gonna let this kind of play through, and uh, don't don't worry about the journals too much. So you'll those. you'll find them. It really is going to be okay. You know, you can actually get a pretty good sound out of these things. Do you think all these rooms have names? You know, like Chamber of Eternal Peril or the Cave of 39 Spiky Rocks. Let's stay close. It'd be easy to get lost down here. I think it's looking southwest. More molten lava, or is it molten magma? Either way, it's definitely molten. Molten. Oh, great, now that sounds weird to me. Let's stay close. It'd be easy to get lost down here. pointing south. Suddenly I'm really craving omelets. Better watch our step here. This one can be Dave. Dave the Corridor. Let's stay close. It'd be easy to get lost down here. It's facing northwest. remember this chamber. I nearly got lost here last time. Personally, I'm more of a landscape fan. Maybe a nice bowl of fruit?
a lesser pirate would have made at least three mushroom gags by now. This would be majestic if it weren't so deadly. Let's stay close. It'd be easy to get lost down here. It's definitely facing north. Didn't we come this way already? I don't think most mushrooms are this jiggly. It's upsetting. Let's stay close. It'd be easy to get lost down here. Compared to the circus, it seems to be pointing east. The grumpy talking skull. No, nothing? Oh well. Ugh, these things smell even worse than I remember. It's not the fall that kills you, it's the boiling. You'd think there'd be more of a monkey theme down here. Hey, I found someone's journal. This is LeChuck's handwriting. And it contains all of his innermost thoughts and secrets in an easily digestible format. This is incredible! Oops. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. Just a second. I think I got sand in my shoe. This can be day. Wait, did I already say day? No, forget it. Now we should stick together. It'll be safer that way. This is definitely high on the list of caves I like least. Now that we have gotten through the catacombs, we are going to finally see LeChuck's ship and we have the final memoir location right here. So looking at the ship, the memoir location will be right here on the right and this will be number 10 and you will complete this accommodation. Excellent. Once you get that, you're going to take the zombie head and you're going to take it back to Guybrush and give it back to him. Now, at this point within the tall tale, everything is going to be kind of linear and very easy for you to complete. 
but I'm still gonna let you see how I did it and kind of walk you through the very last bits. But you're going to give the zombie head back yeah, to Guybrush and It'll he's going safer. to head to the LeChuck. There's gonna be some dialogue and eventually the LeChuck is gonna run away, as they say, as all good pirates do. Legendary phantom ship of the ghost pirate LeChuck. Huh. Smaller than I remember. You better wait here while I sneak aboard and save the land. I'm the only one who will get... Too late, dumb words. Caught. Huh. Guess I shouldn't have taken off the necklace. You shouldn't have taken off that necklace. I knew it. And you'll never catch me now. Way anchor, you cretinous cadavers. We've got what we came for. I came all this way to save her, and I let her slip through my fingers. Oh, was I kidding? What a pirate legend. Just a guy with unusually spacious pockets, and now I'll never see Elaine again. Oh, Elaine. Elaine! Very unfortunate for Guybrush, but that's okay, because we're about to get a new ship. After a lot of dialogue that I will not spoil you on, we are going to be dropping the sails here and chasing LeChuck through these lava river thing that we got going on down here. So pretty easy. Just drop all the sails and just sail the boat on through. Now you'll have the front cannons. They'll be on there shooting the rocks that kind of fall down. And this will just be a very linear path. So I don't need to show you all of this, but just set sail and follow the path until you finally enter into the final area which will fight with chuck the chuck ship dead ahead they found us sir touch me if you can get back here lechuck it's not like a chuck to run away Upon arriving to the final area, you are going to fight LeChuck. Now, for me, I did this as a solo, and what I ended up doing was just positioning the boat behind the LeChuck because Guybrush and Elaine actually shoot the cannons on the front of the ship uh, at, at LeChuck's ship. So just position the ship behind them, and you will need to do this three times to bring down LeChuck. Friends. 
we did it! <laughs> the truck's been blown to smithereens! Yes, I noticed. But we can celebrate later. After defeating LeChuck the third time, he's going to come back and use his newfound sword to kind of control us as pirates, which is very unfortunate, but it is what it is. We saw this coming. I needed to complete this, my burning blade. Guybrush! Now, they're going to disappear and leave us, but good for us. We knew that we needed a little mojo, as she says. So she is going to take us back to uh, back to Melee Island. After a bit of a black screen, we are going to arrive back at Melee Island. Once we're here, we're going to jump onto the dock and go talk to the captain. I knew it. The Chuck's taken over the whole town. Head to the church and do what you can to stall the Chuck. She's going to tell us that we need to head to the church and that's exactly where we're going to go. And a lot of bananas. open the doors and the uh controls are going to be taken over through an animation that rare made and i just want to point out really quick this is a sneaking animation i would love to see this get added to the sea of thieves let me know what you think but this would be pretty cool to see just something kind of allowing us to be a little bit of the pirates that we all want to be a little sneaking around Anyways, it didn't work. LeChuck hurt us and he's going to use his sword on us. And we're going to let all of that play through. At a certain point, Kate is going to bust through the window. And this will be our opportunity. And from here on out, the Pirate Lord is going to take the people away. And you and LeChuck are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one of our favorite things, insult sword fighting. Don't let your guard down. And remember, in this world... It's not your sword that cuts deepest. Upstarts, nincompoops. Everywhere I go, no matter what I try, it's always pirate wannabes who meddle in my plans and ruin everything. Well, I may have lost Elaine and my burning blade. But I can still have my fun by tearing you limb from limb! Not even Ramsey dares. Now, to this face is going to be like the Tall Tale number two, where we are going to need to retort to the insults. Uh, good old LeChuck. This is going to happen three separate times once on the outside of the church. We are going to need to do it three times in each of the three locations to I defeat LeChuck. Ramsey's it will take some time, uh, so don't worry too much about it. Just kind of try to guess the best kind of retort to the insult that he's throwing at you. This is exactly like the insult sword fighting from the Tall Tale number two. I did mess up a few of the times, but eventually I kind of got a hang of it, and uh, we got through it. Shall be my blushing bride. I can't believe your audacity. See? 
any of these pirates are a joke. Prepare to taste the hot winds of oblivion. It's foolish to stand and fight me. I can't believe your audacity. The sea of thieves you know will soon be nothing but a memory. Eventually, the Pirate Lord will show up, and you're going to grab the root beer, and you're going to spray it all over LeChuck, killing LeChuck, and ending the tall tale. Legendary pirate LeChuck. I should get to win once in a while. Why do I never get to win? It makes me so, so angry. So angry, I could just. For battle now where's the chuck look up guy brush i think this is one fight we're a little late for oh so i don't get to save everyone how am i supposed to prove i'm a mighty pirate legend if other people hog all the heroics your story is still being written guy brush there are plenty more pages left in those memoirs besides being a pirate legend isn't just about the battles you fight or what you accomplish it's about who you are and all that you could be. True legends know when to take a stand against those like the Chuck, who take all they can and give nothing back. On our sea of thieves, we can do better. Stop by my tavern sometime, and I'll show you what I mean. I have a map I think you'll find particularly interesting. Well... I think you're on your way to being a pretty legendary husband. <laughs> but even if this isn't really Melee Island, I think I'd like to stay for a while. Once all the dialogue is done, you are officially done with this tall tale. Head back to your ship to complete it and get all the accommodations uh, finished. Now, at the time of the recording of this video, there was a bug that even if you did everything correctly, you still did not complete it and unlock everything. So I'm sure Rare will fix it, but when I made this guide, this uh, currently was bugged for everybody, which is unfortunate, but uh, you still kind of needed to pick up your the anchor and set sail through the portal, but you will have everything unlocked. And once Rare kind of figures out what's going on and updates it, we, uh, you should have everything completed at this point, but you have all the journals, you have all of the memoir locations, you have all the other little accommodations throughout. If you follow this guide to a T and you will be in business. Now, before we go any further, I did want to say at the very end, again, I do have just the locations of the notes and the memoir locations 
if you just want to see that again or if you're not sure if you got them all make sure to check that out and hey if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button please do that really helps me out a ton more than i think you ever will realize especially for youtubers it helps our channel grow and gives us uh just you know helps us out with the youtube side of things so i'd really appreciate it especially if you like this um like this guide video plan to make all guide videos for all the tall tales uh has been the tradition so yeah once you sail through the portal you will start to get all of the things unlocked all the combinations unlocked and congratulations you just completed monkey island tall tale number three This pond has... The river splits here. It used to flow just one way, but I used some of Herman. Either this is a poorly balanced
I made a... Yeah, all that waxy buildup can be a little awkward. Yeah, sometimes it helps to jiggle it about a bit. This monkey... I wasn't certain what I'd find below monkey. Pass me the head of the navigator. This was where I spied the Chuck's ghost ship for the first time. 